once worked for a manager that had absolutely no idea how machining worked, or really any manufacturing for that matter. And honestly, he didn't really care to know. He felt like the shop was beneath him and he was far too high level to worry himself with any understanding of how it all works. So all the time he would pull the programmers into these meetings and just demand that we make improvements that were absolutely impossible. And since he had no clue of how cutting metal works, we couldn't get him to understand just how insane the things that he was requesting were, no matter how much we tried. And as soon as we started talking technical, he would cut us off and wouldn't hear us out. For example, all of our parts were made out of 316 stainless steel. So we ran through a lot of tooling. And we had metal finishers whose job was specifically to deburr, buff, and sandblast the parts to get them ready for quality. Well, in an effort to impress the managers above him, he figured out a way that he could eliminate all of our tooling costs and also get rid of all the metal finishing jobs. So his grand solution was for the programmers to find a tool that would never wear out and wouldn't leave any burrs on the part. Those was his exact words to me. I want you to find a tool that will never wear out and won't leave any burrs on the part. I was like, Okay, yeah, I'll just buy one of those tomorrow and get them all changed out. Like, that's a thing. Like, we all started laughing because we thought it was a joke, but he was dead serious. He asked us about it every single week. And he would tell us that we were making him look like a fool in his meetings with his managers because we haven't found this tool yet. And we couldn't get him to understand that you're not going to replace all these tools with one single tool, number one. I mean, you have drills, you have center drills, you have bull end mills, ball end mills, all different sizes and he literally thought that you could replace all of this with one single tool and it would never wear out and it wouldn't leave any burrs on the part. Anybody that knows anything about cutting metal will know that a tool is eventually going to wear out. It's eventually going to get dull. But you couldn't explain that to him. He did not understand it and he didn't want to understand it. But there was some kind of outlandish request like this all the time and we were always chasing this unrealistic expectation so real incremental process improvement could never happen in the shop or it would happen at a much slower rate. But we never could get him to understand if he just spent a couple hours a day in the shop or one hour a day if he doesn't have the time or 30 minutes for a few weeks, however long it takes, but just a few minutes a day would greatly increase his understanding of how all of this works so we could actually start making better improvements, better decisions, because then he would know what he's looking at. But you could not get him to understand that. But that doesn't mean that it's all blue skies and sunshine on the other side either. I've worked for managers that were much better machinists than I will ever be. And some of them were very good to work for. And it did make it a lot easier to work through issues because then I had a manager that knows what they were looking at. But some of them would also make things just as difficult, but in a completely different way. If you're a manager that has a strong machining background or at least a good understanding of it, then you have to be extra careful not to completely take over the mindset of your shop where your ideas and your views are the only ones that are valid. Creativity and imagination are a vital part of being a good machinist or even a good shop as a whole. And if a manager steamrolls over every idea and doesn't allow their personnel to have any thought or input of their own, then that manager is kneecapping the growth and development of the shop because they are limiting the entire shop to only one thought process. Their employees are also going to be miserable because nobody in this trade wants to be reduced to being only a button pusher. But if you do that, it won't be long before these people stop offering any input or helping in any way, and that leaves all of the critical thinking to a single person, which is not only going to lead to more micromanaging, but also keep them from their real responsibilities as managers. Part of having a shop with an excellent dynamic is having multiple people that can look at the same project and have different points of view. And that is all coming from the different backgrounds that each person brings. So as as a manager, instead of using your machining background to dictate every step the shop takes, you should use it as a guide to keep your employees on track and hold them accountable. Because if you're completely oblivious to the manufacturing process, then there is no way that you can hold your employees accountable and ensure that they're being productive and efficient. In my opinion, what really makes a good manager is one that figures out what the true role of a manager is. Now, opinions are going to vary on this, but I feel that a good manager is not one that takes every task upon themselves and micromanages every fine detail in the shop, 
because that would mean that they don't have any faith in their employees. And if they're doing this, then they are surely neglecting the bigger picture items and their other responsibilities. A good manager puts the right people in place to get the work done and focuses on supporting and guiding those people to keep them on track and let their employees do what they are hired to do. A manager should be there to offer any support that their employees need and to be able to make a decision when hard choices need to be made. A good manager will learn the different personality types in their shop and manage each individual accordingly because you can't manage everyone the exact same way. Each person is going to require a different managing style. A manager should not be the biggest obstacle an employee has to go through. They should be their biggest supporter. A good manager will recognize their role and the role of their employees and only intervene when they see their employees aren't performing the way they believe they should. And even then, a good manager will try to coach these employees and lift them up instead of berating them and tearing them down. Finger pointing and casting blame should never be a manager's main goal when things don't go as planned. A good manager will focus more on the cause, solution, and future prevention of issues rather than just trying to find someone to cast blame on just so they can put the heat onto someone else. Your employees have to know that you have their back and in turn, they're gonna have yours. So having faith and trust in your employees, listening to them, having patience, humility, the ability to make a decision, willingness to provide resources to be successful. All of these are some of the best qualities that you can have as a manager. But I wanna know what you guys think. Should your manager be someone who is an expert in the trade or an expert in people? Or should they be both? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button. Thank y'all for watching. We'll talk at you later.